what to do, what to do, da da do, da da do. Edsel Ranger. It's a really big classic car. I'm just gonna get used to this big thing because I feel like I'm driving a yacht. All right, so today, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a 1959 Edsel Ranger. And this car was by a brand named Edsel, which was in a way between the brands Ford and Mercury with Lincoln being on top. So they basically created this brand to compete with other General Motors vehicles. And unfortunately, after a while, they didn't succeed. <laughs> the thing is about the Edsel is that they made about 44,000 of them. But one year in 1960, they only sold 2,000 of them. <laughs> so after that, they are like, well, it looks like this is gonna flop, and thus it did. I mean, here I am in this car, and yet I've never seen one before in my entire life. I've been to plenty of car shows in my lifetime, but I've never seen this one. And I think that's because everybody does the normal rest restorations of Chevelles and Mustangs and everything else. So when you see this car, you're like, what is that thing? You can't even really, the grill doesn't even really know what to do. It doesn't know what it wants to be. But in a way, that's what makes it special. I mean, look at the interior for God's sake. The cool thing about classic car interiors is that they're so intricate to the point it's almost art. You have all this beautiful chrome, you have all this beautiful color which matches the outside of the car, and it's kind of overwhelming and it's one long bench seat front and back. So it's, it's pretty nuts, so we don't have a seat belt either, so I hear that's safe. Now three in the tree is a shifting technique I am nowhere near used to. Your first starts all the way down here, your second goes all the way up here, and then you go back down to third, which is the most abnormal feeling ever because you'd be like, why didn't they just do it a sequential way with one, two, and three, but they didn't. The other thing is, is the brakes. There are none. Basically, when you slow down, you have to take so much room. Because first, you're a big, heavy boat. I think last time I read about this car, it was basically 4,000 pounds around there. And along with that, the brakes are, well, they're old. So you just have to be situationally aware of what you're driving. This is by no means a performance car. It's one of those cars where you go around the town and it just looks pretty. It's a gorgeous car and it's very sad that it was in a way an automotive failure that it didn't have a big comeback. So the motor in this car is a V8, it's a 292 and it makes around 200 horsepower at 4,000 RPM as we go around this bend. And honestly, that wasn't as bad as I expected. <laughs> come on, come on, big old girl. <laughs> See the apex, that, that was legendary. <laughs> you know that old saying that American cars can't corner? I think I'm starting to find where that is. Oh my lord. Classics have been pretty absent on this YouTube channel. And the only other old car in the channel I've really done is the hearse, which was interesting and also the old Thunderbird but now we're in something from the 50s and even with just those 10 year jumps this is a whole different world even this speedometer when you climb up it, it it's like struggling to stay alive it looks like so I'm not gonna lie I've screwed up this shifting like four times now and there's no way to indicate it there's nothing telling you that you're doing it wrong and so you have to guess each motion. One motion you pull in, then up, then another motion you pull straight down, then another time you go to neutral by accident. It's just, yeah. It's interesting about how pure this car is. There's no electronics in it, really. There's a radio, but oh my gosh, brakes. Come on, stop. Another thing you notice about this car is the steering. And about the steering, you feel like you're driving a yacht. 
and you have this huge, huge steering wheel in front of you. The only other true classic car I've ever driven was briefly a 1965 Mustang in Pueblo, Colorado at the end of my rally. And that was my first time I had the experience of feeling a car with a big steering wheel and not much steering response. So you have to really crank it to go sharply. There's no power steering. So when you're trying to turn from a dead stop, it's probably not gonna happen. So it's better to get a little bit of momentum and start turning in and then you can make your move. Come on, come on boat, come on. <laughs> I feel like I'm time traveling as I go through a parking lot because everything else on the road just looks so generic and normal and yet they were able to style cars so so much with personality back in the 50s especially where there was so much competition for new cars after World War II especially that everybody wanted to be the next big thing. The thing is, is with this weird H pattern this thing's rocking is that you want to be nice to it when you have to do the pull-in movements, but you just can't. It's brute force, very much like the car. It's a big, heavy car, and it just wants to be well, thrust around in a way. Not in the way of performance driving, but you just have to get it going. It's like a, it's like a stubborn car. It just is like, no, I don't feel like moving, so you're gonna have to really motivate me. So. This might sound like I'm being really gripey and I don't like the car, which is not true. It's just, it's such a different mindset and it's it's almost fun trying to figure out all this stuff. It's like a puzzle trying to figure out all this stuff. And it's it just shows how much we've progressed in the automotive world, but at the same time, we've I feel like we've lost some of this personality. It's kind of sad, but I mean, there's no center console. When I was setting up my camera right here, I was like, oh wait, I don't have to switch sides, I just scoot over. So you can all pile in, which is probably one of the most unsafe things you can possibly ever do, but it still has that charm. Here's the thing about the Edsel Ranger. It's a beautiful car, it drives fairly well for what it was and what it was meant for, cruising and having a good time with everybody. But let me ask you this, do you think this car was worth spending one billion dollars for a billion ford spent a billion dollars developing this car because they believed that it was the bee's knees they believed that it was gonna be the showstopper forever and it wasn't how much they sold versus how much they developed it even though they sold 44,000 of these still not enough no, not even close. So when you think about it statistically, this could be the biggest automotive failure in history. It shows that all car companies make mistakes. And sometimes the cars that we don't even think about being hits become the big hits. And sometimes the ones that we think are gonna be amazing aren't so amazing. Oh boy, coming up to a light, slowing down. Okay. Uh, I, I don't have a choice. I'm, yeah, I'm just going for it. Momentum. Oh no. So I'm in neutral. Halfway towards me. Pull down. That's first gear. Second gear, you go up, then out, then all the way up. Then to go to third, you go straight down past neutral. It took me a while. Listen to it. Then out, then up. Oh my gosh, he did it right. And third. That's how it's done. Should you ever drive a classic car? Absolutely. It's one hell of a time. But when you're doing situations like I'm about to do, uh, turn, 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 turn. You just have to be aware. So anyways guys, I want to thank every single one of you for watching this quick little review. I hope all of you enjoyed it as everything rattles around me. I had a great time driving this Edsel Ranger. It's a shame it did as bad as it did. I want to thank Jordan so much for the offer and letting me drive this beautiful piece of machinery. So I will see you guys next time and take it easy. Have a good one.